Should Andy Reid bench Tony? Well, I don't know if he can because they're already thin at the receiver. You know, they got Ross, one of their receivers that they were counting on this year. He had a domestic violence issue, so he still has a suspension to serve. So I don't know if and when he's coming back. You see Sky Moore got bailed out yesterday. He fumbled the ball, but they got a, a holding call away from the ball that kept them. So right now, I don't really know how they can bench him considering the fact they're already thin at receivers and don't have anywhere else to turn. But when you look at it, he's lo he, he lost his confidence. Because he's always he's looking, he's looking to make a play every time he gets his hand on the ball. If you watch this deal, you see he's already looking to get upfield. Well, you can't. I, I've never seen anybody score anything or get any yards without the ball in their hands. <laughs> and so it doesn't do you any good to think you're about to take off if you haven't secured the ball yet. And it's it's, it's getting to the point. You see Patrick Mahomes now. Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid. It cost him hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Because they are, they pointed it at the officials. In actuality, they were upset at Kadarius Tony, and and Patrick Mahomes is like, I don't really know what you want me to do, guys. I uh, have to throw him the ball, but it's going to come a time, and I've seen it happen. And I don't want right. to call the quarterback and, and the player's name, mm -hmm. but I've seen a time where a player has dropped the ball so much, the quarterback has looked at him, he's wide open, and goes oh, somewhere else with the football, Stephen. It's happening a. now, and it's, it's and it's about to happen. To, a, right. to, an, uh, to an extent that you're like, Patrick, you got to throw him the ball, but he's going to lose all – if he has it, he's very, very close to losing all of his confidence in Kadarius Tony. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, uh, before we move on, um, Travis Kelsey, my brother, you see what we're talking about now? I mean, he was upset the other day on his podcast, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, dropped the F-bomb and all this other stuff and – you know, because he was coming to the defensive receiver. We understand mm -hmm. why he felt the need to do so. We're not yeah. faulting Travis Kelsey for that. But do you understand what we're seeing, sir? Because it's <laughs> there, plain as day. And what you're seeing in that footage with Patrick Mahomes is somebody that's screaming at the offensive minds, the offensive coordinator, Nagy, uh, uh, Andy Reid. And it's like, yo, y'all, what, what more do you want me to do? Damn, because... Basically, they're telling him, throw that man the football, throw that man the football, throw that man the football. And he's getting to the point, like Shannon just pointed out, he don't want to because you don't believe in him anymore. I do have a solution, though. I do have a solution because the drops is one thing. The interception from it is another. And I think that that elevates. If you just drop the pass, okay, we got another down, I'll go somewhere else, okay? But when that creates an interception – that's when you lose it. because not only yeah. not only does that create a turnover, but that also blemishes your statistics. See, everybody ain't gonna remember that to that, that Kadarius Tony dropped about five passes and four of them led to interceptions. They ain't gonna remember that. What they're gonna say is Patrick Mahomes threw four interceptions. That's gonna tick them yep. off. Okay, so we have to we have to understand that, right? Here's the solution, Shannon. Here's the solution, Dan Olavsky. Just throw it towards the sideline. If he misses it, it'll go out of bounds. <laughs> Don't throw it anywhere in the middle of the field of that man. I mean, anything in between the numbers, just don't throw it. Don't even look in his direction, okay? And it make sure it's outside. If there's two choices. Either he's going to catch it or it's going to be incomplete and out of bounds. It ain't going to be something that he's going to drop and it's going to fall into the hands of a defender. Don't throw him anything in between the numbers. That's my <laughs> solution to that problem. So... Now, from I, my non-football <laughs> playing self. I'm just saying, damn it. I mean, I, I'm just thinking logically. I'm putting on my spot <laughs> thinking right here. You understand? So if you throw it to him on the sideline, okay, you make sure it's going to touch him or it's going to go out of bounds. Because if it's in bounds and his hands are what you're depending on. Are the Dolphins really this good or are the Jets just that bad? Jets are really this bad. They're really, um, they're pretty damn awful. Um, I'm not going to hold this against Salah too much. It was a bad day yesterday. It was awful, and if yesterday is indicative of the entire season, that would be different, but there have been many times this season where we looked at the Jets' defense, and we've said they're pretty impressive. They just, they just, can't, they just can't score points to save their damn life. Zach Wilson is a huge problem. He shouldn't be on this roster. He shouldn't be a backup. He should be gone. Having said all of that, I'm looking at Douglas, the GM. Why was Zach Wilson on this roster? Why was he the backup? What did you do? This comes a point in time where we have to look at the roster assembled and what have you, and we have to say we understand that Aaron Rodgers went down, but my God, did you have to look this bad? And this is what the New York Jets are. The offensive line is trash. 
their quarterback is trash. And so when you look at it from that perspective, what hope do the receivers have? What hope did the defense have? I think what you're looking at with the New York Jets is a team that is so incredibly disappointed. They came into the season with such lofty expectations. Aaron Rodgers gets hurt on the fourth play of the season offensively for them. Shannon and I were at that game together, all right? You get, you get hurt then. And then you turn around, and, and despite how elite your defense is and the expectations that came with it, week after week after week, you see that you can't score a damn point and that your quarterback is just, just not good. Had no business being the number two overall pick and what have you. And that's and we have to look at Douglas and, 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 and what you assemble for this roster. If anybody should be on the hot seat, it should be him. Salah ain't too damn far behind, but I'd give him an opportunity to have a quarterback because he hasn't had one yet since he's been with the New York Jets. That's Douglas's job to find him one. That's not his job, and he hasn't had one. And I think that's I, what the problem is. Steven, I agree with everything that you said. I think the thing is what they were hoping for Zach Wilson is that Aaron Rodgers would get a couple of years up under his belt. Right. Zach Wilson wouldn't have to play for two years, and he'd gain valuable experience through that. But that didn't happen. But when I look at this Jets roster as quarterbacks, you mean to tell me that Zach Wilson and Trevor Simeon are better than Cam Newton? And I'm not saying Cam, not the 2015 Cam Newton, but 2017, 2018 Cam Newton better than both of them jokers. You can't convince me otherwise. The Jets are that bad. Now, I'm not saying Miami isn't good. I think they're a good team. I don't think they're great. Uh, we haven't seen them beat anybody of, of merit yet. Uh, we'll see what, the Bron what happened with the Broncos, their final record. But thus far, when they step up in competition, they fall down. But the Jets are horrible. The Jets are horrible, and you're not winning because the quarterback is the one position that you can't hide. You can hide a corner. You can hide an offensive lineman. You can hide a lot of positions. But the guy that touches the ball on average 60 to 70 times a game, you can't hide him because of what a defense will do, they'll make you play him. They'll make you make him an active participant in the game and not a cheerleader. Years before, uh, uh, D.O., you remember, you could run the football, you could disguise your quarterback. But the NFL, the way they've opened the game up and, right. and, and basically forced you to throw it, you can't hide him any longer. So it's the Jets being pathetic, being putrid, and they're that bad. Miami is okay, but this is all about this is all about the excuse me. This is all about the Jets, not the Dolphins. Was it a bad look for Peyton to be ripping into Russell Wilson? Hell no, hell no. The only thing that I'm mad about is Sean Payton feeling the need to tell somebody it's none of your business. You know what? That's my player. I'm the head coach. I yell at who the hell I want to hell yell at. If they ain't getting the job done, if I got a problem with something that they've done, I mean, we ain't on the sideline trying to win PR contests. He's a head coach. Do you, do you want? Have, you, have we not seen Bill Belichick yell at people? Have we not seen Bill Parcells yell at people? Have we not seen Mike Shanahan get at people? Shannon Sharp, your former coach. What about, what about uh, John Harbaugh? What about Mike Tomlin? The list goes on and on. Damn it, if a player ain't doing what they're supposed to be doing, you're, the coach gets on you. That's coaching. I mean, is it, listen, this is a Russell Wilson who, by the way, has been having a good year. But I, I literally saw some ignorant-ass people on social media talking about he just had a kid. So what? Congratulations. <laughs> Wish you nothing but the greatest of health and all of that other stuff. But that don't have a damn thing to do about you, what you completing 56% of your passes against Detroit and y'all getting ramrodded and run out of the Motor City. They got one of you have nothing to do with the other. Oh, so you know what? I got, I got family issues. I got something to celebrate family-wise. So I get to come on TV and come on the air and bring all of that with me and then, and then not do my job. No. That is nonsense. Sean Payton has been in the league for years. He's been coaching over 15 years as a head coach. He want to get in somebody's behind, so be it. He has every right to do it and don't have to explain a damn thing I, because I wanted to. That's what he should have said to the reporter. If, if Russ had fumbled the football, if Russ had thrown an interception, I probably could agree with you, although I haven't seen a coach getting into it like this on the sideline with a coach, of, a quarterback of that caliber. But the offensive lineman lined up offside. How the hell is that Russ' fault? I, I'm cannot if Russ if Russ audible out of a play or something like that transpired. But I didn't I didn't handle being yelled at. Period. Let alone being yelled at publicly. So for me, Stephen A, I, I, I'm gonna disagree with you because for me, he needs to offer some clarity because I'm sure the reporters are sitting there like, well, 
okay, if the offensive lineman lined up offside, how is that Russ's fault? Did Russ do something? Was it something that led up to that? Maybe there was a sequence deal that happened that we didn't see or that we don't know. But nah, I don't think I don't think in that situation Sean Payton was right to yell and 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 undress basically Russ on the sideline like he did. I, Shannon, I completely understand where you're coming from in regards to you not responding to it in that regard. This is totally okay with me. Usually I'm like, you never do it to a quarterback in public. This is December football. It's basically a playoff game for Denver. They weren't playing well offensively. It's a highly emotional moment. I don't think this is anything other than two elite competitors and certainly one at the head of the organization trying to gather the attention of the quarterback and maybe others. I mean, Shannon, you know this. Sometimes coaches yell at this person just because they know they can and they're really trying to yell at this person and or group. So, yeah. it, it, you but know not what? the quarterback deal. <sighs> I've, I've been yelled at before. Well, let me say this, Dio, stop it. Uh, uh, <laughs> Shannon, but, but Shannon, but check this out, Shannon. Shannon, you okay. don't know whether whether the offsides was – what a he's product, yelling a about. Byproduct yeah. of what Russell Wilson did. And, and, and that could have been what Sean Payton was upset about. Also, yeah. I saw no pushback from Russell Wilson. Zero. He that's said not, that. Oh, go ahead. That's not, that's that's not, not his personality. Per, that's not his personality, Stephen A. He's not, you, he, he's not like, how do we, you remember when Bill O'Brien, you remember when Bill O'Brien right. got in Tom Brady's face and Tom right. was going right back at him? That's, that's right. Tom's personality. That's not Russ's personality. But wait a minute. But wait a minute. I'm saying this. How do you know? Because he was playing for Pete Carroll before and then Nathaniel Hackett. And they certainly would never do that. So right. that's not their personality. So we don't know. Right. We don't know because Russell Wilson had never been exposed like that. But I think the thing is, being knowing him the little bit that I do, I don't know okay. him that okay. well. That's and the fair. little bit that's that fair. I've been around him, Stephen uh -huh. A., okay. that, that doesn't seem like his personality. He's the type of guy that, okay, I'm going to take the coaching. And if there's something that he said that I didn't like, I'll address that at a later date and time. But like I said, like you said now, I'm not privy to everything that was being said throughout right. the entirety of that drive. Maybe there was a call that Sean wanted Russ to get to that he didn't get to. Maybe right. there was a check that he wanted him to check that he didn't get to. Maybe he wanted him to quarterback sneak or run something else that he ran that led to that. So I'm not sure. And I think the reporters are asking, like, okay, you're yelling at that. What was the sequence? Because we scored, and the guy happened to line up off sides. If the guy lined up off sides, how the hell the offensive lineman, or how is the quarterback responsible for yeah, how but, the but, offensive but, line but, lined up? But they, but they were asking for – they weren't necessarily asking for what specific – in terms of a play breakdown to explain it. They were asking why you yelling at your quarterback. And he's like, you know, it's, it's, it's none of your business. Yeah, why. It's, it's none of your none business of why I'm doing it. Yeah. And he's absolutely right to say that. And keep in mind – Russell Wilson did spend last year being incredibly pacified. They, I mean, they did they did everything but oh, put yeah. a bib on him. Uh, they, they put a bib, but, put a bib in his mouth. But you know what, Stephen A? I know Stephen A. If he's in that lo if he's in that locker room answering that question, he'd ask that same question because you damn right I would have. You damn right I would have asked. You know I would have asked. And I want to know the details. And then you'd <laughs> ask follow-ups, lots of follow-ups. That's follow right. That's right. <laughs> Provocative ones. That's what. I, well, that's what I and did with Giannis last week. And then you might give your take two on the Stephen A. Smith show. Get real provocative. Dan, are you impressed? Baker Mayfield has the Bucks in first place of the NFC South. I'm impressed, not surprised. Mm -hmm. I've always been a Baker guy. I've always thought that Baker was a good player and that he had a lot of people who said unnecessary things or, or, or judgment about his game. A lot of people say, like, oh, Dan, you're this quarterback apologist. All you do is try to prop up mediocre quarterbacks. No, I don't. <laughs> Just try to tell it what it is. I try to tell it what it is. Baker Mayfield's a good Bro. player. Bro, hey, Shannon, he's a good look, player. Look he at the quarterback. He went into Lambo. He went into Lambo. Yes. And did something that that's not what Aaron Rodgers has done. Have a per that's not, perfect that's, passer that's rating. What, that's not what Molly asked. Molly asked, "Were you surprised that she that he has this team in front of the NFC South?" When you look at know. Desmond Ritter, when you look at Desmond Ritter, when you oh, look at uh, 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 Bryce Young, when you look at Bryce Young and Derek Carr, really. Really, really, Desmond Ritter, Bryce so you, Young behind you them. Thought, you thought Tampa Bay was going to be in there over Pitt, I thought like they'd New be Orleans? In there. I thought they – listen, when we thought about New Orleans, we thought about their defense. We didn't think much about Derek Carr, who's been in the league for nine years and doesn't have a playoff victory. Stop. Okay, that's number one. Number two, stop acting like we're making stuff up about what we've seen from Baker Mayfield. We never called him a scrub. But the former number one overall, overall pick. pick. Okay? 
It did not, has not measured up. That is a fact. Okay, that is a fact. And so when and, and then you had it one. Baker Mayfield's going to go to the playoffs two of the last three years. Excuse me, they beat Pittsburgh a couple of years ago. That was a really good season on his part. Yes, sir. Outside of that, how has Baker Mayfield looked in his career? Stephen A. He's he, he was in Carolina, who obviously is. What about when he was in? What about oh, when he was in that's not what you just said about Bryce Young. When he was, Where, where's what, Bryce Young at? So Carolina's not that. Hold on, Carolina's not that good. They're in a bad situation. Oh, I just said Bryce Young, Bryce Young is in Carolina. And you were like, oh, Baker, Baker, I said Baker. New Orleans. I said New Orleans, Shannon. You unequivocally really? thought Tampa Bay? No, 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 no. First of all, he was in Cleveland. After the playoff year, he was playing awesome, then hurt the shoulder. Okay, the shoulder was a huge part of that season. Cleveland moves on. Then he goes to, I believe, Carolina. Carolina's in not a good situation right now. In turmoil. Oh. Goes to the Rams. Play some good football for the Rams. Not great, but good football. Here's the point. Everyone says that Baker Mayfield stinks. No, he doesn't. He's a good player. Highs and lows. But we talk about Baker Mayfield. We can't sit here and say, well, if Brock Purdy was the number three pick, he would be this guy that we rave let, about. Well, let me ask you this. And then always I, talk about Baker as the number one pick context. Let me ask you this. Has Baker Mayfield, as the number one overall pick, a franchise, supposedly franchise-building quarterback, been everything you thought he would be? It's a simple yes or a simple no. Yes. He's everything you, you thought he would be? You done lost your mind. How, oh, look, how you guys? Your mind. Guys, how? Oh, my you, God. How? Take last year out of the equation because he's played. For, he's playing on two different organizations. Why? The Rams Why is he playing on two different organizations? Because one great the Cleveland quarter, Browns one great quarterback decided great, to go chase Deshaun. Let me ask you a question. If, that's not what San Diego did. That's not what the Chargers did. That's not what Cincinnati did. When you got great quarterbacks, do you go look for another quarterback if he's what you said he is?